Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I told Mary Lou, I said, there's not going to be anybody there. It's, it's Labor Day tomorrow. People are going to stay home. It's going to rain. The weather people have a way of scaring you to death. And I said, you know, but I've got to teach anyway. And well, four more are gathered. Well, two or more are gathered together. You know, the Lord said that. And, and look, what a nice, nice crowd we've got here. And how good it is to have you here. And in spite of the fact that you knew I was teaching, you came anyway. Anyway, it's really good to have you folks. Class, I'm excited about what's going to be going on in this class for the next three months. I've got to tell you, I've been teaching a long time. Bill's been teaching a long time. Uh, Nancy has. Uh, just Steve has. Never have I ever known us to do what we're going to be doing for the next three months. Now, maybe you all have, but I don't think so. The next three months are going to mark a milestone for me and for Bill, Nancy, and Steve. I'm sure I'm right when I say that we have never done what we are about to embark on. In the month of September, October, and November, and on into the first week of December, we will be teaching you all from this one letter, Paul's letter to the Philippians. To cap this off, this letter is only four chapters long. And I checked it, and I know the other teachers have too. Every line, every single line of Paul's letter to the Philippians will be in our lesson. Uh, this is so unique, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it come into fruition with our other three teachers. So buckle your seatbelts and settle down as I start us up. September the 4th, 2022, the joy of communication, of community, the joy of community. We're going to be in the uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, and I have 1 through 11. Now, you know my style. Uh, I, who wrote it? When was it written? Why was it written? And who did he write it to? Well, I've got this working Bible <clears throat> that I, I have been using for at least 20 to 30 years, and my notes are scribbled all over that wonderful working Bible of mine. My notes on these first 11 verses say this. <clears throat> Philippians is a letter of joy, exclamation point. Live like a Christian should, exclamation point. Joy is not a feeling. Joy is a choice. Joy is not a feeling. Joy is a choice. Now, <clears throat> before we get into the passages for <clears throat> today, <clears throat> let's learn a bit about this town of Philippi. Philippi was a city in what is now known as modern-day Greece. It got its name from Philip II, King Philip II of Macedonia, and he had the distinguished uh, pedigree of being the father of Alexander the Great. We all know about Alexander the Great from our history lessons in school. Philip II built a city on top of an ancient city, and in 356 B.C., Philip enlarged this city. He took a city that was down on his terrible, and he built a city on top of this ancient city that had been destroyed by an earthquake or similar disaster. Uh, I did a little uh, searching. Uh, Philippi was only 10 miles away from the Aegean Sea. Now, when you're only 10 miles away, that's pretty close to a large body of water. And historians feel like, and I have a picture at home on this wonderful book I've got of Philippi as it looks today. 
and it's just in ruins. It's in ruins. It's no longer a viable city. But Paul, <coughs> Paul visited <coughs> Philippi on his second missionary journey in 49 A.D. So that's when he wrote it. Uh, he, uh, according to Acts, the 16th chapter, he founded that church there at that time. 49 A.D., he started the church. Uh, Paul spent a lot of time in various jails. We know that. In fact, <clears throat> I think the Lord made it clear to Paul, hey, Paul, some of the best letters you're ever going to write are when you're in jail. Now, that's kind of unique, isn't it? But if you notice, most of the wonderful letters that Paul wrote, he was in jail. He spent a lot of times. He was a Ro in a Roman jail when he wrote this letter. Also, when he came to Philippi, he was thrown in jail there. So he gets to Philippi. He's, he opens the church, starts it up, starts preaching in there, and he's thrown in jail because there were a lot of people in Philippi that were not Christians. They were all kind of people and different um, uh, people, and they had different churches. And it was just a, a situation where he is in the midst of starting up a church there in Philippi, <clears throat> excuse me, in 49 AD when things are not exactly wonderful. Now, hopefully all of this information is going to help us get into the Bible verse for today. So if you'll look with me, we're going to be in Philippians, the first chapter, 1 through 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who had Philippi with the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Remember, he's in jail when he's writing this. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart for you are all <coughs> partakers with me of grace both in my imprisonment and the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent. So be pure and be blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And that finishes that. He is so filled with the Holy Spirit and he's writing these people. He's in jail. He loves them. He's writing them. He's, he's trying to, to affirm them. Can you imagine how many emotions erupted over the congregation when this letter was read to them? They, the letter is read to them and I would love to know how emotional they had to have been because they are hearing from Paul. Paul's in prison. He loves them. And, and actually, when Paul was in prison, the Philippians sent him regular gifts to help keep up his spirits. So he was thanking them for that at the same time. And many times, these various churches would bring Paul food and, and, and nourishment during his incarcerations. Now, at the beginning of this letter, Paul mentions his ward and confident, young Timothy. Anybody know anything about Timothy? What kind of a, what kind of a guy was Timothy? He was young, and his family, what kind of a family? You remember what kind of family Timothy came from? One was Jewish, one was Greek, 
Exactly, exactly. That is exactly right, uh, Charlene. Uh, Timothy came from a wealthy family. We know that. You know, you, you have to discern things in, in the Bible because it's a one-way conversation. But that's so true. <clears throat> Charlene, uh, Timothy's father was a Greek. His mother was Jewish. So, and Timothy lived in a magnificent splendor. He lived in a large house. You know how we know the house was large? We know it was large because at the very beginning of Christianity there, the church was formed and held and there in their house. And that would uh, had to accommodate a lot of people. So we know Timothy came from money. He came from, from position. He had a good family and all. And yet he leaves them to go with Paul on his missionary missions. And, and, and uh, Paul and Timothy is in jail, at the jail with uh, Paul when he's writing this letter. And he, because he says, here I am with my young lord, Timothy. So at the beginning, the letter of this letter, Paul mentions his ward and confidant, young Timothy. And uh, he just, uh, Paul calls himself and Timothy servants. That term was usually reserved. I did not know this. When, when Paul calls himself a servant, at that time, it was a very lowly thing to be called. You would not want to be called a servant because that was something that people did that you didn't want to do. It was reserved for lowly, bottom of the barrel status in society. And there's Paul willing, willingly calling he and Timothy servants. I had no idea. Paul, taking a lowly position, he humbled his spirit for greater elevation and an even greater joy because class, when you have no one to thank, you can thank God because you have served him. When you have no one to thank, times you can thank God and you can thank him because you serve him uh, you know it's incredible to me that that Jesus could take a sorry no count guy like Saul Saul of Tarsus a Roman citizen and on his road to Damascus Saul is on his road to Damascus to get all of these Christians, bring them back, and execute them, and so forth. And as you know, Jesus knocked him off of his steed and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And you know the rest. His name is changed from Saul to Paul, and he becomes one of the most magnificent Christians and writers that you would ever want to take a man like Saul and make him into a man like Paul. Just absolutely, uh, uh, it just overwhelms me. One thing we can all be thankful for is the fact that in that day, a letter writer always put their name at the beginning of their letter. So here we are 2,000 plus years later and we know who wrote it. Uh, in the first three sentences, Paul gives thanks. And in four through six is the first time the term with joy appears in Philippians. Joy and unity are the two dominant themes of this letter. Our other teachers will be following up on this and, and, and we will find out that joy and unity are the two dominant themes of the letter to the Philippians. In 7 through 8, Paul elaborates his feelings to all the church there and says, all of you, quote. He says, all of you, three times in verse 9. Paul used the word agape to describe the feeling they were to have for one another. Agape refers to self-sacrificial love. Paul is aware that some in the church there had false pride and self-centeredness. Ah, 
churches are churches and people are people and we've all been in churches long enough to know that sometimes there will be differences of opinion and people will leave a church and go to another church. This could this happened there also because we've got in verse 10 through 11 he uses the fright the fruit of righteousness and that noun for fruit is in a singular collective tense. Paul is referring to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So when he says fruit, he's saying the Holy Spirit. And Paul says this, remember church, everything is about God, not you all. Have you ever felt that way? Sometimes I, 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 I if you're like me, somebody, I'll get, so why did this, some, 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 and Mary will say, Wallace, it's not all about you. It's not all about you. And, that, and, and she's right, it's not. And, but sometimes don't we get that way? We want things like we want things. We want things like we want things. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's not always about us. You know, <clears throat> as I studied this lesson, I marveled at how thoughtful Paul was for the partnership he felt he had with these Philippians. Our lesson writer voiced his opinion that many church members consider their membership as something akin to a club affiliation. I can truthfully say as I look around at all of you that that is not what we have in this wonderful class and that is not what we have in this wonderful church. I just love this church, love everything about it, uh, and I try not to say, ooh, I would like to do it so-and-so because it's, this is a body of Christ. It's not for just one person. We are a body. <clears throat> I referenced Dr. William Barclay, uh, Bill and I like <laughs> Dr. Barclay, that great old Scottish theologian who said, and I quote, for many of us, Philippians is the loveliest letter Paul ever wrote. It has been called by two titles. It has been called the Epistle of Excellent Things and also the Epistle of Joy, end quote. <clears throat> there was Paul in jail, hungry and shackled, and yet joy exudes from every fiber of his body. He sings. He's in jail. Terrible conditions. And he sings. He sings. Now that certainly is fantastic for me. And that really finishes up the, the lesson for today. I'd love to go a little more into it, but I don't think I better because <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go right into 12. Nancy, are you next? Bill, okay. Uh, Doc, Bill, I'm not going to get there. <laughs> it's so tempting to do that, but as I said, we are going to be in this lesson uh, all of this month, the next three months, and then that first week in December, and then we, and we will cover every single word in it. So if we don't have anything else to say, I'll just close this with a prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, how wonderful it is that we can study these wonderful words of Paul, words of wisdom from a man he knew who knew wisdom from our holy, holy Savior. Let us take things away from these lessons that will help us to live better lives, to be more conscious of the fact that we should not discriminate, that we should uh, care and love each and every person that we run into. We ask all of this in your wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Mm -hmm.